Hey guys, welcome to the Lost Chapters podcast. I'm Roman, and he is... John. Alright. So, uh, we're just a... Warhammer? I mean, not just Warhammer. I guess Wargaming podcast? Tabletop Gaming. Tabletop Gaming, there you go. Uh, so, uh, this episode we're going to talk more about heresy, of course, because we love heresy. Uh, but... Before we do that, John, do you have any games played or anything? I know you play more games than I do. Um, I haven't played any Warhammer. Uh, I did get to play some Crisis. Um, talk about that later. Okay. Um, my my hobby progress is also mostly in Crisis Protocol. Uh, so when we get to that, but I haven't played uh, Warhammer since the last time I played Ninth Age with the the Polish guy. Um, and that was the last game I played. Oh, that's right, that's right. Um, alright, is that it? Like nothing else? Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually played something. It wasn't necessarily a tabletop game, but from the last time that we recorded to now, uh, I did play, what was it, Soulbound, which is the uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar uh, role-playing game. And okay. our buddy Trent, shout out to Trent, uh, actually, uh, set he's that so up. handsome. He is, he is very handsome. Uh, but, uh, he was the DM, which I did hear, and I haven't really passed it on to everybody, uh, but he is willing to be a DM for any games. And I've been wanting to play D&D, uh, things like that, or I'm open to, like, any RPG, really, just to try it out. So, he said he'd be more than happy to DM. So just Good just guy. keep just keep that in mind, uh, but yeah. Uh, so who did I play? I played as a KO, and it is very much like Hero Hammer. You feel like you, I did like amazing amounts of damage, like things that I really wouldn't be able to uh, to do at any other thing. Um, it doesn't have like a d20 system or anything like that. It does revolve around d6s, and it's uh, it does take a lot of beats from uh, Age of Sigmar, like hitting on threes, kind of things like that. So that's kind of familiar if you did play Age of Sigmar. Um, Age of Sigmar. It sounded weird in my head, but yeah, uh, I played a KO. Uh, there was a British guy that played a. Oof, I don't even know, I don't even remember. Uh, did he play a, uh, what are the tree people? Sylvaneth. He played a Sylvaneth. Sylvaneth. Yeah, then we had a dude from Florida, and he played a, I don't even remember. I want to say an elf of some kind, but I can't even remember, I'll be honest. And then, of course, Trent was uh, our DM. So uh, it was just the starter pack. Like, you can get it for, like, 20 bucks. You know what I mean? It's, like, the same thing as, like, the D&D starter, um, where it has, like, pre-generated uh, character. characters. Yeah. And then all you do is just go through that, the scenario that they, uh, they, they point out to you. But uh, it was pretty fun. I don't know how a full campaign would go. I don't, I don't know if it'd be something I'd really be interested in. Because from what I know of it, everything's kind of already taken care of for you. Like, there's not as much customization, or at least that's what it felt like. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that's what it felt like. Even with the pre-generated, it kind of already gave everything. And... From Trent, he said that it doesn't really change that way. So, I don't know how I feel about it. I'd be interested in, in playing it again. And, and like I said, play a, uh, maybe a little bit of a longer campaign with the bigger sessions. Um, but he was also open to playing the uh, the Warhammer Fantasy Battles role-playing game. That they just, uh, what was it? I think it's like their fourth edition or something like that. That just came out not too long ago. And uh, the new 40k one, Wrath and Ruin, Wrath and Ruin, I think is what it's called. Um, I think 
those are all by Cubicle 7. I think that's who does their RPGs, so... I mean, I'd be interested in playing them, but... Especially since it's easy, you know, on Discord, like we're doing right now. Um, it's super easy to just get in a group chat and just kind of do it from there. Especially if the DM has, you know, like, Roll20 or any of the other, like, systems where he can just share his screen and then you just go from there. You know what I mean? Um, so, I'd, I'd be interested. I'm not interested in playing the... What's everybody playing right now? The uh, tabletop simulator. Oh, yeah. You can play Warhammer on that. I'm definitely not interested in that. There's nothing appealing. I don't, want, I don't want to play Warhammer on my computer. That's, that's stupid. Like, I want to roll dice and shit like that. Which, really, I've been I've been fiending to roll some dice. Some dice of some kind. Whether that be, you know, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Whether that be uh, some Heresy or some 7th ed uh, 40k, something like that. Maybe even try other games like these little fucking robots here, which I love. I love these little robots. Adeptus Titanicus. And, uh, but yeah, I'm kind of like in hobby ADD mode, for sure. I'm jumping from project to project. And that leads into hobby progress. Because I have been doing a lot of dumb shit. Uh, I just finished up a commission for Mike Blanton, so shout out to Mike Blanton. He has a fully painted uh, Kings of War Vanguard Northern Alliance Warband, I think is what they're called in that one. Um, it's basically a skirmish version of Kings of War, um, where they use even like D8s and stuff like that. So I'm interested in playing. I have a fully painted Warband as well, uh, so I might try to play that relatively soon um so i finished that up uh i did get another commission from our buddy uh caesar uh, i'm gonna be painting up some stuff for him so uh i'll update that i, I post on the red star uh gaming group so i'm sure you'll see some updates there and then what I was doing for myself was Adeptus Titanicus. I was trying to at least paint these three little robots because that's like what I think the base are 120 points and then some other stuff. Uh, so I was laughing with John because this this hobby lends itself to not knowing what you have at any given time. So I was like, you know what? I know I have some Adeptus Titanic stuff. Let me see what else I have to put together. And then maybe I can start like painting and like putting together a Matapole and all this kind of stuff, right? I already pretty much put together all the base of Adeptus Titanicus. You know, like I had three knights that I already did. Uh, two, war, uh, two Warhounds, a Reaver, and a Warlord. So I pretty much am set for like a starter game. And I completely forgot that I put it together. Then I completely forgot that I bought two of the Serastus Little Knights. Like the expansions. And I have no idea like when I bought them or if I received them as a gift. I have no, like no recollection of ever getting them. So I was like, that's funny. I had to put those together. Um, and what else? What else? Oh, I've been putting today... Actually, I just started putting together some Outriders for uh, Horus Heresy. Because, of course, I'm going to play Dark Angels like we said last time. But, I figured the first one that I should probably go with is probably what got me into the game in the first place. Is Ravenwing. So, um, I'll explain Ravenwing and like how they work in, in Heresy in a little bit. But, I, I was working on that today. So, I have three of them. Uh, already assembled. I'm kind of pissed because I know that I have a certain left arm that I need because, you know, you don't want all these guys to look the same. So this guy, of course, is looking slightly askew and has both his arms on everything. The sergeant, of course, has, you know, his arm up. And if you look, he's actually like off his bike a little bit. 
he's like standing to one side and kind of uh and i, and I kind of have him like i'm gonna have him like this on a base you know what i mean kind of like that kind of like Up right wheelie. yeah like fucking or uh what is it, a nose i don't know what it's called i know it's skateboard it's a nose grind i know that much but uh so this guy doesn't have his right arm so I'm trying to figure out if I can find a specific right arm that'll fit. So he's like, you know, holding his pistol out to the to the right, blasting some fucking filthy traitor. You know what I mean? Watch it. Oh, you're a fucking filthy traitor, huh? What, what do you want? What do you want from me? Huh? Can you worship a corpse on a fucking golden toilet? This is heresy. He's not a fucking corpse, you jackass. Not yet. He's a living being. He's a pussy. Oh, shit. And, like, that's not even half of it. Fucking Fury of Magnus just can't... Because, okay, let's be honest. I'm dyslexic. I, I'm a terrible reader. So much so that I think I'm going to go to, like, Amazon and get those um, films that you put on the pages. You know, for... Dude, for... I haven't seen that since I was, like, an elementary teacher. Exactly. I think I need it, though. Because I remember when I used it back then, like, it really helped me focus and, like, made me dive into the book. Now I'm just so fucking ADD written uh, that I can't fucking concentrate on shit. And then when I do, the fucking letters look weird. So, I have to uh, do that. But I did hear, I listened to The Fury of Magnus, which is the... Uh, Horus, Heresy, Siege of Terra, uh, novella. It's Graham McNeil. So he's pretty much written the all of the Thousand Sons. So he wrote Thousand Sons, The Crimson King, and whatever the third, or I don't know which one the second or third one's called. Um, but he, he did write the trilogy for Magnus, and this is kind of like the wrap-up, and it's so fucking good. Like, you being a fucking having a hard on for magnus the like you have to read those three books and then like read this one because it i'm reading thousand sons i've been reading thousand sons for fucking ever for what like seven years now since we got <laughs> since we got into the hobby that's when you, you started reading it like i the first what was it when did i surpass you and, yeah because i think at that time I, think... I was i was still reading um, like book reading, uh, the sixth book, uh, the Dark Angels book, Descent of Angels. That was like the last book that I remember like physically reading. And by that time, you were like, "Oh, I just got to Thousand Sons," and then like I started Audible, and I was like, "Fuck this! I can. I'm more of an auditory person anyway." So the fact that I can just listen to a book, and especially with my job at that point, uh, when I was a driver, I literally just listen to a book a day, basically just driving so i surpassed you like a motherfucker i started giving you spoilers you were like i gotta start reading you never did i, no, I never did but fury of magnus is very cool um i know some of you assholes are gonna misconstrue and misread the book and be like oh fucking magnus did nothing wrong he did everything wrong from the first fucking moment of the Thousand Sons book. He's doing things wrong. So, I don't know. Uh, but it is a very, 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 very good book. It is classic Graham McNeil. He's, like, leading you askew for, like, two chapters before he gets to, like, the meat of the book. And then he, like, interweaves that first chapter into, like, the last four chapters of the book where it all starts coming together. So, yeah, it's, it's just good. And I think that's it for hobby progress for me. I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have anything else. Yeah. Uh, mine, mine's a, mine's a lot shorter. Um, I work very slowly. Uh, so for hobby progress, I put together, um, some crisis protocol. I built Fisk. I Wilson Fisk. Wilson Fisk. Yeah. The kingpin. Um, I built uh, Green Goblin. Mm -hmm. I built Loki. I built 
um, Bullseye. Okay. And uh, I don't know if that's it, or if I'm not remembering who else. I, I don't you, know. I, I told you, I told you too late, obviously, but I was like, you should have just told me that you're looking for Bullseye. Because I bought yeah. the Daredevil and uh, Bullseye a long time okay. ago. And I was like, oh, I'm going to paint these because I love both these characters. Um, and I don't even want to play those characters, so I don't know why I bought it. Um, yeah, uh, so I finished painting Fisk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the way he came out uh, with his white suit and his fucking pink shirt mm-hmm. and his fucking cane. I even look. I like. I googled like the most expensive wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns out it was a uh, African blackwood. So I painted his cane black. Okay. So it's African blackwood. It's like seventy dollars for a two by four. Hmm. So um, I, I went off on him. I like him a lot. Uh, still painting Green Goblin a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm mostly just like I sprayed him green and then I started doing the purple of his outfit and that's as far as I've gotten. Okay. Um. Bullseye, I painted them really quickly. I just did them like all black. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I, I didn't like like the blue white suit. Like I know it's that's how he is in the comics, but mm-hmm. I wanted him to be the assassin that he is. So um, I went black, and then I, I left his uh, his bullseye wraparound neck piece mm-hmm. and the bullseye on his forehead. I left that white. Mm-hmm. Um, Loki, I have almost finished painting. I'm working on his skin right now, mm-hmm. uh, which. It's a little hard because I keep. It's just like he has almost as little skin exposed as Magneto. Like maybe just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like the opening on his helmet's a little bit wider than Magneto. So like yeah. I keep getting my flesh tones onto the gold of his helmet, and I'm just like, oh fuck this. And so I just need his skin, and he's done. Um, well, I mean, that's why they tell you to to like go from the inside out of a model. Yeah. So that you don't um, do that. Yeah, but I was already, like, fucking with golds, so, um, I just, I started with the gold. Mm-hmm. Oh, how could I fucking forget? Um, Modoc. Oh, okay. Modoc was the other guy, yeah. Um, Modoc was, like, the first piece I bought, too. How the fuck did I forget Modoc? Because you're dumb. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> uh, I got him on a big old pimp and golden throne, mm. like the emperor that he is. Not about um, that. Um, <laughs> so he's not complete yet he's almost complete um i need to paint his base and uh like the the smoke the plumage that's holding him up from his hover chair oh, okay yeah uh and that, that's about it he's almost done cool um so i've been putting together some of the custodes that i ordered mm-hmm. uh we just did a forge world order mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i got a i got a telemon um which I just need to finish magnetizing one of his guns, and then he's complete. Mm-hmm. And uh, I already built and washed the uh, Al- Alaris Terminators. I don't oh. know the guys with the flamethrowers. Uh, I let me look up their name in Harrison. Go for it. So, um, so I already got them built, and they've already been washed in soap. But they're ready for a priming, and I built. 10 regular custodes that I had from uh, Burning of Prospero. And um, so I had 1,500 points at 14 models because uh, I already had uh, an HQ piece. Um, I don't remember who he is. I think he was a named character maybe in 30k and then like they removed him. Who, I don't who, know, but he's the old uh, he's the old guy walking down the staircase. Old guy walking down the staircase. Yeah, like I can't even. I don't even know where the model came from. Um, I don't even know how I got it. For for um, custodes. Like, for custodes. Yeah. I see that. So he might be like one of those exclusive game day ones. Maybe. But, but I'm still not sure how I came across it. But it's I have it. Mm-hmm. So I had uh, the Telemon, uh, ten custodes, the three Terminators. Oh, which... and the HQ. Which the Terminators are you were close? They're uh, Aquilon Terminators with Infernus Fire Pikes. Yeah, so, um, and then uh, I was looking through all my shit because I still haven't unpacked everything from, <laughs> from the move, mm-hmm. and I found a box of five more customs. 
I was all excited. I fucking sent those pictures to Roman. I was like, look yeah. what I found. Yep. So it's uh, 19 models. It's 2,000 points of customs for 30k. That sounds um, super appealing to me, because <laughs> the amount of things that I have to paint for Dark Angels is ridiculous. And um. So I'm gonna finish building the custodes, and then I'm gonna go back to finish building my uh, vampire accounts. Mm -hmm. I still have to finish building the 2,000 point list that uh, we're gonna play our first game of. Mm -hmm. uh, I I just need the uh, black knights. Uh, oh okay. But yeah. Any ten of them. Mm -hmm. Any ten of them, and I've only made the horses for five, and that's like as far as I've gotten. Yeah. So I just want to finish the custodes because that's a, like you said, it's fucking, it's nothing. It's 19 models. Yeah, the the fat. That's it. I think you can just paint up. You just literally like retributor gold spray, just like yeah, and that's it. Like they're already at an okay standard. So like next time, the, like the next game you play with them, all you gotta do is like wash them. They're like, oh yeah, you've made progress. So like you just gotta keep doing little by little, and you have a fucking two thousand point. That's fucking insane. I hate you that you play fucking custodes. Yeah, uh, but there's other things coming. Like uh, I got a little bit of Mechanicum. In the order that we did. Now, uh, now I feel bad for you. Yeah, like this is <laughs> fucking wires and fucking little skinny wobbly metal legs. And they're practically they fucking stand on. They're practically a horror army. Like you, you're gonna paint a lot of little guys for your for your fucking core. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but um, so I have them. Uh, you know that that's more of a, a back burner 30k thing because. Mm -hmm. I'm still. I still have to finish painting my thousand suns, which are uh, all built. Um, mm -hmm. And then I still have a lot of iron warriors that's not built. Um, what What so. is like your? What would you say is like your legion? Because you have two of them right now, and so do I. Like I have like yeah. my sons of Horus my, or Lunals, and I'm gonna start my DA. But DA is gonna be like my main thing now. Yeah. Um, so. I, I love Iron Warriors and Thousand Sons because mm -hmm. uh, each one represents something that I terribly missed about 40k, mm -hmm. um, which it's the two biggest reasons that I started playing 30k mm -hmm. is Iron Warriors, uh, like everything that I have has blast templates. Mm -hmm. I'm just fucking throwing templates all over the fucking place. I don't care if it's hitting you. I don't care if it's hitting the battlefield. I don't care if it's hitting me. I'm throwing fucking templates around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Thousand Sons brings back... Um, like a better magic phase. Yeah. You know, I know the seventh edition magic phase maybe wasn't the best. A lot of people didn't like it, but it's so much better than what 40k is doing right now, uh, as far as magic goes. It's um, it's it is odd because even like our um, our Red Star contemporaries, um, which again go to their uh, YouTube Red Star Gaming and uh, subscribe because it seems like every other week, uh, every other Sunday. They'll do a, uh, a round table where they have key members of the community uh, come and talk about something. And they were talking about like how everybody's just a little um, disillusioned with 40k right now. Like at least like the main people that I talk with are kind of in the same boat. They're kind of like, uh, I'm not really feeling 40k at the moment. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of reasons why, you know, like, the more that comes out for 40k, the more it's obvious they're just trying to turn it into a tournament quality game. Mm -hmm. You know, just win by any means necessary and win fast and hard, destroy yeah. your opponent, cripple them on turn one before they even get their chance to go. And get, get those whack lists ready. The win at all costs. And, uh, like, I, I, I really don't like how they're trying to speed up the game. Mm -hmm. You know, smaller... Smaller game table, the the games, like, they knocked off, like, 45 minutes mm. on average from game time. And I realized, um, thinking to myself, that that's why they got rid that that exactly, that reason why is why they got rid of uh, Disgusting Resilience as it was for Death Guard. Because they eliminated a whole phase of extra rolling. Mm -hmm. You know, and to them, like, picking up your failed saving throws and re-rolling them to try to get those 5-ups, that was time shaved off the game. It's the only reason they did that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I got into 40k knowing, expecting, 
and enjoying the fact that I was going to sit there for three hours playing a game, you know, because it's not just about playing the game, it's about hanging out. Yeah, for sure. That's half the reason and, why we uh, play this game. Yeah, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, something like Kill Teams never uh, uh, never really got big in my heart, you know, because that was one of the, the big factors of it, was like, oh, we can be done in 30 minutes. I'm like, well, I really don't want to be done in 30 minutes, you know, if this is my day off and I'm playing a game, then I, I want to sit here and play a game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. That, so, that's... all in all... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, so, all in all, those are the two uh, biggest reasons why I jumped to 30k, the magic phase, and all the blast templates. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think... Uh, I think my main is probably going to be... Um, uh, Iron Warriors. You know, Thousand Suns is a... It's a very elite army because of all the the psychic shenanigans. Mm. You know, it makes them a little bit more expensive. Not quite as elite as uh, custodes, obviously, but yeah, uh, definitely not something that uh, that I would play every single game with. Um, whereas Iron Warriors, I've already got like so many ideas and so many models to put these ideas into place. You know, uh, like three or four, possibly even now, different right of wars that I have models for. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, they're just an all-around fun army. Like, not broken by any means. Yeah. Uh, but, but sturdy. You know, I'm gonna stay on the table to the bitter fucking end. Win or lose, I'm, I'm still gonna be there. <laughs> yeah. It's, um... Yeah, I mean, they just released, um, as of recording this, they just released on a community that, uh, the Ravenwing, like the Ravenwing uh, part of uh, 40k and like some of the rules that happen there and I'm like, oh, that's cool, but I'm still just not interested in playing 40k at the moment. Not not new edition 40k, I should say. Because I was talking to Chan, um, I was just asking him, I was just like, question, is it weird that I want to build a 40k army? He's like, yes, it is kind of weird because you're not into it. And I go, well... I kind of want to build a 40k army for 7th edition. And he was like, that's not weird. And I, I, I was going two places with it. Because, like, I would say probably my weakest part of any 40k game. Like, just, at, like, I do not understand it as well as I should, is the Psychic Phase. I'm god-awful with the Psychic Phase. I don't know what I should be taking. I, I, it's like a totally another. It's another, like list building aspect that I have no, under, like no good understanding of. I should say. So I was like, well, there's two things I can do. I can build a strict 40k seventh edition army, um, with gray knights, because I always like to look at gray knights. And then like towards the end of seventh, they had, um. What's his name? The the named guy come back. Um, somebody with the something with a V. I don't remember. Um, but oh, Valdor, right? Constantine Valdor or something like that. No, no, it's the fucking custodian. Valdus. Va- yeah, yeah. yeah, Valdus. 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 Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm literally I literally have Forge World open, <laughs> and it's Valdor looking at me, and I'm like, that's that's not him. He's a custodian. Uh, but I was like, okay, that seems kind of odd because even for me, I already have a, I already have a 40k army that I could play in any edition if I wanted to. Um, and that's my dark angels. Like I have 40k dark angels, which begs the question, why do I like dark angels so much? But the other, uh, the other faction that I thought of was I'm I'm how can I say it? I root for the good guy. You know what I mean? I root for the good guy a lot. That's why I play Imperium is because they're the good guy in quotes. And you be the judge on that. But that's why I do tend to like go with loyalist armies a majority of the time. Like I play Luna Wolves because they were like the loyalist faction before, you know what I mean? And the same thing with Dark Angels. 
they're loyalists. You can only take the lion in a loyalist list. So fuck off, everybody. It makes the same fucking joke that has been around probably as long as I've been alive. The Dark Angel of the Traitors. Fuck off. I don't want to hear it anymore. I, I've even said to John, if we're playing and he makes that joke, I'm just going to pack up my shit and I'm just going to not talk to him. I'm just going to get out. And I'm just going to leave without any explanation. And that goes for almost anybody that I play, especially if I don't know you. Because I don't care what you think about me. <laughs> uh, but if anybody makes that fucking joke, I'm tired of it. I don't want to hear it. It's like that Magnus did nothing wrong. And it's just, he did everything. I'm, I'm tired of it. I don't want to hear it anymore. So if anybody makes that joke while we're playing, like I'm setting up, like I could be like, I just finished my deployment and somebody's like, oh, so I guess you're traitors. I'm going to be like, awesome. And I'm just going to like pack up all my shit. He's going to be like, where are you going? I'm going home. I don't, want, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to. So, I wanted to play a Xenos army. And for some reason, I was like, man, I kind of like the look of Tao. Maybe it's like the weeb that's like trying to escape out of my foot, like trying to crawl out of my mouth. You know, like a, like a, a Men in Black style. You know, like when fucking the bug starts coming out of fucking Edgar's mouth. He starts fucking like, I think that's the weeb in me. So I'm like, maybe, I, I like Tao. But then... Just say you like Gundam, bro. Just say you like Gundam. I honestly don't like Gundams. I can never get into Gundam as like an anime. I just didn't understand it. I was like, they're just fucking like robots that I don't care about. I, they, they all kind of look the same. Like, I don't get it. Like, the way that people say like, other oh, shit just like tends to like all marine armies just look the same that's gundam like they all are fucking white with an accent of red or gold or blue or green in like a rare case i was like they all look like fucking um, american robots and it's a japanese cartoon so it's weird but it's a little weird how all of them are like white legs yeah all of them are yeah and then like the wings are like ridiculous like, you never see, like, oh, the wings, like, fit the robot. They're always, like, 30 times bigger than what they should be. You know what I mean? Like, it never fits the robot size. Even though they're gigantic robots, the wings, like, would... If they if they were real wings, he'd just be, like, so back-heavy and just, like, tumble backwards. Like, he wouldn't be able to stand up. But, if we keep getting fucking off topic, you asshole... So, I just thought, I want to do a, uh, I want to play a Xenos army, and I want to play uh, something that's kind of multifaceted, and for everybody, and for everybody, everybody, and by that I mean Will, you asshole, Will, shout out, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Will. Uh, Will's just like, oh, it's just Marine on Marine. You know, he has his fucking beard like this, looking all cool and shit. I can't even grow a mustache. Fucking, he's like this right here. Like, it's just Marine on Marine, so I don't fucking care. Well, fuck you, because they have this. I've showed you this. I showed you this last episode. You can just get it. It's a free document. I'm an asshole that bought a book, but it's a free document so you can get. So I thought, you know what? I've always kind of liked the look of Eldar. I want to play Elder. So, when I do go into a uh, Xenos army, this will be my army. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play Eldar. I'm gonna play Eldar uh, for uh, 30k, and I will play Eldar for seventh ed uh, Warhammer for seventh ed 40k. I really don't care about them in eighth or ninth. Again, that's that's not what we're about. But no, I feel the same way about orcs. You know, I've always I always did like the looks of them mm -hmm. back when we started uh, 40k those many years ago. Uh, like or, orcs, when we got into into uh, 40k, and I was really trying to like narrow in what army I wanted to play mm -hmm. um, before I knew like how amazing 
chaos is in the story because they always suck in games. Um, somebody was trying to get me into orcs, mm -hmm. and what he said to me, fucking eight years ago, nine years ago, however long it was, what he said to me stuck, and I still remember these words to this day, even if I don't remember what he fucking looks like or his name or anything about him. I remember these words. It was the emperor, play bro. Orc. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Play orcs. You'll never win, but you'll have a good time losing." That's that's per that's fairly accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, orcs orcs along with Eldar mm -hmm. are a perfect army for both 30k and 40k because they've been, you know, the cockroach of the fucking universe. Maybe the maybe beginning. orcs. I don't know about fucking Eldar being cockroaches. No, not Eldar. Orcs. <laughs> orcs have been the cockroach of the fucking Imperium. They're worse than cockroaches, man. I'm like you fucking. There's like one cell of them, and like a fucking planet regenerates. <laughs> so they they have rules in 30k. They have rules in 40k. They're a, a fun army to build, paint, and customize. I don't know about paint. You got to paint a lot of fucking orcs. Most orc mm -hmm. players that I've seen don't have fully painted orc armies. They're like, yeah, I've been playing orcs for 20 years. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Why isn't it painted? Because it's orcs. Yep. Like you see these hundred boys right here. That's one unit. Yeah, that's what keeps working. <laughs> that's what keeps me away so much from that kind of stuff. Like orc players are orc players. You know what I mean? Like they they understand the kit bash better than anybody. Uh, I have no idea what to do about kit bashes. So that's like the one thing that steered me away from orcs for the longest time. And the fact that I'm painting maybe like eighty. Excuse me. I'm playing like I'm painting 80 like orcs minimum, like 80 orcs like troops choices, not like oh 80 models all together. It's like no, these are just my core troop choices. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. I don't I don't want to do that ever. But you tend to you do tend to gravitate towards ho uh, horde armies like a lot. Like you, you want to play me conversions. You, you want to play Mechanicum. You want to play Orcs. In fantasy battles, you play uh, vampire counts, which are fucking zombies. And they're like, oh, who does summon boar zombies? It's fucking like ridiculous. I, I, I don't know. I think my brain, even though I love painting, I just feel like, oh, this is never, this is never gonna end. Like it will never end. Especially if you're an orc player. Song that never ends. I'm gonna fucking cut this fucking podcast. All right, later, later guys. Um, just like. Bye. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've really been look, and I've been like looking at this book uh, for the past couple of days because I don't know what like Great Crusade or uh, heresy Eldar really are like because there's not a ton of information on them or, or at least they're, they're not in any of the books really and you could get little snippets here or there from like the campaign books from heresy but it's not a ton so I've been looking at this book and it has a fairly deep, it has like maybe six pages of like what's been out there and like a kind of little fan made things I like kind of put in there but honestly, that's like what I need to get into this army because first and foremost, heresy is all about the fluff. It's all about narrative. This game is not meant to be competitive in any way. Um, a lot of the times, if you bring your fucking dick list, a lot of people will just pack up their shit and leave. Like they don't want to play that. They want to play a story-driven game, and that's why you know me and John always go to it. Uh, that's why we try to get people that are not feeling uh, 40k at the moment to like try out heresy because a lot of those guys should know the rule system already. Now, whether or not they actually enjoy that rule system is another thing. That's another conversation altogether. But the fact that you can get like a really narrative-driven game out of this is really cool. Um, one of the things that I will say. Um, because I was talking to Will about it. Um, the one thing that does drive him out is the wider heresy community. 
they can be sort of snobs and you know fully painted is everything to them and you know they're very particular about some things um so i can i can understand that but come on that's that's why you made the the horsey resurrection group for here or the, the heresy resurrection group here it's just like look it's the red star mentality like we're not all gonna have fully painted stuff but we do enjoy the game we do want to play it so that's just why we do this and like like roman said he he painted his uh Sons of Horus as Luna Wolves. Mm -hmm. You know, this is before they fell. So one of the things we've been talking about is uh, starting um, a campaign of pre-heresy. Like I have Katachan that I was playing in 40k, and this list was fucking stupid. Like it was fucking stupid to the point where I stopped playing it because I was like, I shouldn't be winning this fucking hard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but instead of uh, Instead of getting rid of them, um, you know, that was right around the time where we started really looking into 30k, and I was like, well, 30k has the militia, which is the guard before it was organized into the the guard. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to be playing my Katachan as guardsman, and, you know, we're going to start at the very beginning. Like, you know, we're going to do this whole campaign of of uh, Romans, uh, Luna Wolves, mm -hmm. uh, trying to you know, bring this whole sector into the light of the Imperium. So I have, um, I have actually two militia armies, technically one of them. Um, they're all guard and uh, a lot of bodies, a lot of tanks. And then I, I'm going to use all my cultists, mm -hmm. uh, that I have from 40 K to do a uh, trader guard, mm -hmm. um, which they have rules in heresy as well. Um, you know, they have, uh, psychers and access to summoning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I have, um, tanks that are like all covered in dead things and just more chaos -y. Uh, I have my demons uh, that I can ally and summon so I'm gonna have you know like good guy humans and bad guy humans and we'll just have like this whole campaign of, of Luna Wolves bringing in uh, this entire sector or maybe just fucking blowing up the entire fucking sector mm -hmm. just exterminatus planet after planet cause like hey these fucking eight armed red fucking things because they don't know their demons mm -hmm. they don't know about chaos but these fucking huge monster fucking things just keep popping out of people's assholes and fucking trying to rip us open with their glowing fucking red hot swords mm -hmm. we're not gonna have it just fucking exterminatus you know, we don't know be. how it's gonna end nope we don't know and that's the point of 30k is making this story yeah um and i would, you know that's one of the reasons oh god go no I, I would love to like you know the the luna will like okay just like a little bit of explanation like of course, uh, the Emperor found Horus first, but I believe the second Primarch that he found was uh, Lehman Russ. So I was like, oh, maybe I can have like a little allied like detachment of Space Wolves. Like, you know, like Horus is teaching uh, Lehman, like, look, this is how we're, we bring worlds into uh, compliance. You know what I mean? Like, this is how we do it. And like, you know, he's going to be sitting back. And he's like, all right. I'll sit back, let my, you know, let let a few of my warriors go out there with you, just to kind of get learn the ropes, see if they can be like a like kind of they can use like their political, like acumen, like Horace would always do, like he would always be, uh, so charismatic that he can talk his way into like, oh, we don't have to fight, like I'm just gonna tell you, you know, what we're gonna do here, and Lehman, of course, you know, doesn't want anything to do with that. But I thought it would be cool to have like a, a like some, at some point in the campaign, uh, space wolves kind of jump in. So like having like you know a pack of like the red claws or whatever the hell they're called, uh, and just kind of see how that goes. Yeah, and then like um, so I got the Mechanicum stuff. You know I'm gonna keep building on that because Mechanicus, uh, Mechanicum worlds were around before they you know came into the imperium they mm -hmm. were just there doing their thing building their fucking giant robots mm -hmm. so you know just different different armies playing against each other yep. just starting starting the storyline because this is a long fucking storyline yeah so um and then another thing i was interested in is they have those uh there's a, a third party company that makes thunder warriors yes and uh there's rules for them in 30k mm -hmm. you know the uh so 
there's there's a lot of stuff that can be done in 30k it's not just marine on marine and i know that is a big aspect because that's that's a big aspect of the storyline of 30k is the whole civil war yeah um but it doesn't it doesn't just have to be marine on marine you know there's you still have a a, a lot of alien armies a lot of human armies thunder warriors chaos you know the beginning of chaos mm-hmm there's, yeah. there's a lot to be done. Yeah, and, like, we, we did say it beforehand, you know, like, there is uh, Demons of the Ruin Storm. So there are, you can play your demon armies. Like, if you have a demon army that you're playing for 40k or AOS, you can bring it into the Heresy. Like, even in the Heresy, they're not, like, uh, fully formed and devoted to a certain god. You can do a Chaos Undivided, so you can have, like, a full... You know, a little bit of everything, or you can use all that. They even say, like, yeah, go ahead and proxy. You know, we have a, a good range of demons. Go ahead and use them. The the cool thing is, even like your bigger demons, like uh, your uh, great unclean ones and your bloodthirsters and things like that, are all there. And even if you have the Forge World stuff, you know, like the the greater demon of corn, if you have that, that's a named character. Um, that's, that's a name, the Lord of War um, choice there. So if you have that kind of stuff, it's you can always play Heresy. Additionally, you know, I know a lot of people uh, they're, were playing Warhammer before um, Primaris Marines were a thing. And, you know, maybe you're getting tired of the whole Primaris thing. And why is every release Primaris, you know? Nobody else is getting new models. Nobody else is getting updates. Where are all the other codexes? Just primaris 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 like if you still have your your firstborn sons Mm -hmm. you know that's usable in 30k like you don't have to start buying new models into this game yeah bring your firstborn sons bring your vindicators bring your predators your rhinos your your fucking uh what do you call the big tank land raiders yeah you know your land speeders all that stuff is usable in 30k Mm -hmm. stick out your old models that aren't you know very usable in current 40k and try 30k yeah, like you know, if you like if you like it, keep playing. If you don't, well, you tried. And here's the thing, like you know, you, w- when it comes to the newer editions, you know, there's stuff that's just not good. Like it's just it's not good on the tabletop, but you love the model. Uh, in Heresy, it doesn't matter because like in Heresy, everything pretty much has a fighting chance. That's what I love about this game is that everybody has a fighting chance. Now there is like some cases where you're like up. You know, a marine or like a human or an orc, and having to like try to bust open a tank. It's not gonna happen. Like you're not gonna bust open a land raider, but you wouldn't. Like one one person would not bust down a land raider, but a whole you know crew of terminators hitting you know a land raider with chain fist, they might. You know, and then like, guess what? A lot of things can take melt bombs. Melt bombs are fucking crazy. They're they're just as crazy, you know, in Heresy as they are in Ninth Edition. So it can take out a fucking land raid. It can take out all these things. So like, everybody has a fighting chance. So, I mean, why not try to get those models that you're not using because they're just not points feasible? Go ahead and try it in Heresy. It's fine. And we've said it before, even you Nids players, you got Mega Rack Nids. Or if you just have a 7th Ed, you know, Nids, we, we told you all this. A lot of this stuff is fan-made, and all of it's kind of like PDFs. So you can just look at it, kind of see if you like that. But if you want to use a 7th Ed Codex, go for it. It doesn't matter. What, what do you think I was going to do with, like, Grey Knights? Like, uh, my idea was like, oh, there's Nathaniel. Like, Nathaniel Garo uh, is the first Grey Knight, practically. You know what I mean? They're the uh, the knights errant. You know what I mean? They're Malkadors kind of thing. So like, you can kind of fit some stuff in there and kind of like, you know, mess with it a little bit. Why not? Like, you can use those and, and say like, oh, I have like a knights errant list. Like, I have a knights errant. You know, whole thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, in fact, you can take a knight errant in a custom list. Fair enough. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's the agent, yeah. agents of the Imperium or whatever. Um, but even things like um, there was... What are they called? I think Nullifiers um, are a Terminator unit that they had released in Book 8 of Heresy. 
Um, they're practically the Grey Knights. The, the Grey Knights Terminators. Like, whatever they're called. The Paladins? Yeah, the Paladins. Something like that. Whatever they're called. Um, they're practically that. So, like, why not use those as proxies for the nullifiers? The, the, the nullificators or whatever they're called. Like, you can do all of this. Like, I think people are, are seeing themselves as very limited towards, like, oh, I have to buy Forge World and all this kind of stuff. Just use the models that you have. See if you like the game. If you really like the way the game plays, then you can start like, oh, okay, I really want this model from here. And then just, you know, go ahead and, and choose what you want to buy from there. Like, go ahead and use the fucking models you got. Like, that's, again, that's another reason why we made the Heresy Resurrection group on Facebook. Is we just want people to play the game. We want people to take a chance on the game. Because there's not, it's... It's a niche audience in an already niche kind of game. So we're like a fucking 1% of like a 3% game. You know what I mean? It's very hard to get people into it. But we're trying our best. We really like the game. We really want people to play it. So I do want to bring up one thing. That one of the key things that changes heresy is rights of war like rights of war are a big fucking deal because the rights of war um have uh special buffs that you get for your whole army um but there's also limitations to it like you can't just take whatever you want a perfect example is i was just talking about my dark angels earlier uh in the episode that i'm building all these guys like all these uh these guys on ravenwing so the way that the Dark Angels uh, work is they have six wings, um, which are like the six um, ways to wage war. And Raven Wing is like kind of like their fast attack version of that. So I'm going to read the Rite of War and tell you what that kind of means. So uh, the Dark Angels' unique Rite of War, so it's unique, it's special for Dark Angels, uh, is called the, uh, the Seeker's Arrow. I'll read you a little bit of fluff so that you kind of see what's going on here. The arrow knows the path. This, uh, what? The arrow knows the path. This saying holds great meaning for the masters of the Ravenwing, a formation known for adhering to strange truths acquired from distant worlds, but also from their success on the field of war. When given, uh, what? When given charge of their brothers, they are like an arrow set to flight, graceful, unerring, and deadly. So, that's exactly what they are. They're, they're precision, fucking fast weaponry. That's all they are. So, effects, and these are like the, the buffs that I was telling you about. Um, the Isaac Caliban. Uh, Legion Jet Bike Sky Hunter Squadrons, which, let me see if I have one. I have one somewhere. I'll, I'll, hopefully, I'll, I'll find it later. Damn it, now I want to find it. Oh. John, fill dead air. Come on. That's, you're fucking... You suck. <laughs> Damn, about you is terrible. Yeah, put me on the spot. I got nothing. Well, well you're fucking... Your improv skills are terrible. This is a jet bike. So these are awesome. This has fucking filthy night lords. Uh, iconography, which I'm going to rip apart, um, but uh, that's a jet bike, and those outriders I told you about are, you know, the wheeled versions. So uh, the Legion Jet Bike Sky Hunter Squadrons and Legion Outrider Squads may be selected as troop choices in the detachment either this right of war. So just like everything else, you know, it's broken down into your uh, troops, which I've. Is it even called troops now in ninth, or is it core? Um, but e either way, like your, your troops choices, um, you know, your elites and your fast attack. So usually um, the Sky Hunters and the Outriders specifically are uh, usually fast attack. So now they're just uh, a compulsory troops choice. Uh, compulsory is basically... The, the two uh, troop choices that you have to have in your army are filled by those two. So, like, you have to take those. Um, 
uh, Marshal of the Seeker's Arrow. Uh, independent character models and his attachments with the Scion of the Ravenwing special role, which I'll go over later. Um, may take the hit and run special rule for 20 bucks. So, or for 20 bucks, 20 points. Um, really hard shit at reading. Yeah, I'm terrible. You see, like, this is, I'm, I'm a bad reader. I, I have dyslexia. I have to fucking, like, really concentrate. But, I'm, I'm trying, people. Um, but for 20 points. So, hit and run, uh, basically, you can, uh, engage and disengage in the same phase. Uh, so, that's that's cool you can you know your hit and run tactics which is you know themey as fuck uh the arrow knows the path uh, a unit from this detachment that includes at least one model with a scion of the raven wing special rule gains an outflank special rule and a rise from reserves on a roll of a two plus so outflank you come in from you know the edges of the table or from the uh back of the opponent uh and you know, arrives from the reserves on a 2+. plus. Like, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's really good. Um, and then the last effect is Grateful, Unerring, and Deadly. Or Graceful. God damn it. Graceful, uh, Unerring, and Deadly. A unit that includes at least one model with the sign of the Ravenwing special rule uh, may choose to add two, uh, plus two, to one of the following each game turn. Okay, so each game turn. They can do this, uh, which means what, I guess, on their turn, basically. Uh, run slash turbo boost distance, uh, charge distance, or consolidation move distance. So um, you can add two to your run of turbo. So in uh, Heresy, you have to roll your uh, D6 to get your, like, your run move during the shooting phase, which a lot of people just ignore and just do it during your movement. Uh, but uh, you just add plus two to the distance. So if you get a six, you can go eight, and you're already going twelve, or you're already going, uh, what is it, twelve with a uh, bike. So you're going twelve, and then you can run a D six plus two. So not bad. And that's not. I want to say jet bikes have a eighteen inch movement, don't they? I think that might be new. That that might be new things, but again, I, I, you you could be right, but I thought that there was just twelve inches altogether. Yeah, no, no, the regular bike is twelve, but I think the jet bike is eighteen. I might be mistaken. I don't know, but well, uh, another thing about uh, heresy is again, it goes off of like the sixth and seventh ed. Uh, so things have specific move characteristics. It's not on the data sheet like uh, infantry move six. Uh, bikes move 12 so like everything has a set value that they that they uh, do go so it does it does make it a, a bit harder in terms of like knowing this kind of stuff but it is pretty good um, also the same thing with a uh, charge distance so with your charge distance uh, you go ahead and John John are you there so, sorry about that, guys. It uh, looks like John forgot to plug in his uh, his laptop. I wanted to smoke, so I came outside, and my battery was full. I don't know how it ran out that fast. Yeah. This is what I had to deal with, people. You, this is what I had to deal with. I had to deal with but, my dumb friend. Bob, badass fucking cigars yesterday. Got home and fell the fuck asleep so well i mean whose fault is that work works well mm -hmm. i was passing the book all right so what did you what do you remember i said last we were talking about the the charge distance right or like the the plus two yeah the yeah plus two so it's plus two uh, not only to your run turbo boost but to your charge distance which is huge like that actually gets you into combat um where you might want to be maybe depends um or consolidation move uh now it does say that it's a scion of the raven wing so i have to kind of explain what that is um they, they have the the hexagram uh, which is like the six wings uh it's it's what they call it the six wings of their war is the hexagram so the scion of the raven wing is a uh, trait that you can buy 
for not only uh, special characters or independent characters, but just for characters in general. Like characters can actually just take this. Um, so it's Scion of the Ravenwing, um, a model with this special rule and and any models in a unit with the Legionis Astartes Dark Angel special rule that has joined or is part of may re-roll any run, fallback, or thrust distances. So again, you can add the plus two, but you're also going you can also re-roll it if he's in that unit as well. So like like I said, uh, this is where Dark Angels kind of are different because their sergeants can have like the scion of Ravenwing, like they or their uh, yeah I believe the sergeants can take it. Um, yes, yes they can. So uh, it's not just uh, your like your HQ that has that your sergeants can have this and, and depending you know how many points you have to play with really um, because it is 25 points like no matter what it's 25 points so it's, it's a hefty bit of points in bigger games doesn't matter like a 3,000 point games fucking everybody can have it but in like a 2k game maybe limit it to a few characters like your um, heavy hitting kind of uh, units may want to have that but, like I said, there's the effects that are their buffs, but they also have limitations. So the drawbacks. Um, a detachment with this right of war may only include vehicles of the fast skimmer or flyer types. So that means I can't have tanks. I can't have any kind of uh, dreadnought. Anything like that. Like, all of my vehicles uh, that have the vehicle keyword have to be, you know, the fast skimmer or uh, flyer. They have to have that keyword. Um, so an army using this Rat of War is limited to a single heavy support choice no matter which force organization chart is selected for. Um, so pretty self-explanatory. I can only get one heavy support, which again, there's not a ton of heavy supports that are also flyers or have the skimmer rule. Um, the most popular, uh, I guess, would be the Fire Raptor. Uh, everybody's kind of familiar with the Fire Raptor. It's it's a beast in heresy as well so if you have the points for it which i want to say it's something like 280 points or something like that so it's pretty hefty um so bigger points games go ahead and at that um but also uh, all jet bikes and bike units selected as non-compulsory troops choices must begin the game in reserve so only two of the units, like um, one of the lists that I take has four units of jet bikes and two units of outriders. So only two of two units, whichever I choose, can start in the game. Everything else starts in reserve. So it's a very, uh, you have to play very defensively in the first turn of the game or you're fucked, you're going to lose the game. Um, all compulsory uh, troops choices um, with the Legionis Astartes Dark Angel special rule and this attachment must include at least one model with the Scion of the Ravenwing special rule. So remember when I told you that they can take that Scion ability. So that means that automatically uh, two, my two sergeants have to take it. They can't not have it. So again, it's a limitation. Like You have to have this so you already know that 50 points are going to go to that. So out of out of uh, a 2,000 point game, I'm already down 50 points because I know I have to have that. And that goes for my HQ as well. Like my HQ has to have it because, uh, oh, I guess it's not in the, uh, it's not in this right of war, but there are specific uh, other rights of war that they have where the HQ has to have it. Like there is no ifs, ands, or buts. If you do not have it, it's an illegal list. Um, but another limitation, uh, the army may not include a fortification detachment or an allied detachment. So I can't be allied with anybody. This has to be a strict Ravenwing, uh, Dark Angels, and that's it. Um, also, uh, no unit from this detachment using the right of war can be joined by independent characters that are not part of this detachment. 
So no, again, it kind of goes with the, the allied detachment. There's just nobody that's not part of this army is allowed to be in the army. The Ravenwing are very uh, focused on, or Dark Angels in general, are focused on Dark Angels. That's it. And so that's kind of what a Rite of War does. Like now, I'll explain that uh, 2,000 point list that I have because I built it on Battlescribe because of course Battlescribe is just free. Um, so let me load that up. Any questions that you have, John, while I load this up? Uh, no, but um, I do want to say that like um, the the Rite of War, like Roman said, uh, it can really change the game. Um, and each army has its own specific right of wars, but there's also right of wars that can be shared by anybody. Um, for instance, there is the Pride of the Legion, where your veterans become your dedicated troops choice. So instead of just having like regular uh, Marines, you now have, uh, you know, three, four, five, six hundred year old veterans who know their shit, who have been in a thousand fights and survived, um, who are amazing with their chain swords and precise with their bolters and um, so that kind of helps you if you don't have a lot of models well now your veterans are your troops choice mm -hmm. and um, there is a right of war called orbital assault or suborbital assault where now anybody who could have taken a transport can take a drop pod mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there is a requirement that anybody in the army um, in that particular right of war has to be in a drop pod um, so but that doesn't limit you to just marines because dreadnoughts have drop pods uh, you know Roman just got himself a dreadnought drop pod mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can put a leviathan in a dreadnought drop pod and just drop that shit behind enemy lines and what the fuck are they going to do about it it's yep. a fucking leviathan mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of right of wars that, that uh, anybody could take and then each army has its own specific right of wars as well yeah yeah so i mean the dark angels have six in particular because again it's the six uh wings of the way they wage war but um majority of them have at least three i believe a uh, majority of other uh, armies have at least three unique rights of war along with um universal rights of war that anybody can take so um let's see let's see oh uh my 2k list and it's not a full 2k because i still have to work out some points and what i want to do but uh like i said i have four uh units of jet bikes uh two of them now these are sky hunters so there's different variants of jet bikes there's the sky hunter which can only take one um one heavy weapon one heavy weapon uh, instead of the heavy bolters because they all come with heavy bolters you can replace one for a specific number of points so i have two of them with melta guns uh two units with melta guns i have two units with uh what is it i want to say it is oh uh volkite because of course i love volkite and then i have uh two units of outriders these guys are here uh and they have plasma uh, twin linked plasma guns so proto uh, black knights black knights mm -hmm. uh, and then in my fast attack and this is kind of where I think there's some room to kind of see what I want to do because as of right now I have two uh, units of three uh, javelins uh, javelin attack speeders so javelin attack speeders are land speeders, uh, but they're a little more. Um, what are I think they're tw uh, front armor twelve, I want to say, uh, instead of front armor ten or ten all around like a regular land speeder. Uh, so they're just a little more uh, sturdy. Sturdy, yeah. Um, but I have two units of three, so three of them have the. Uh, Last cannons, of course, and then the other ones have the twin linked uh, cyclone missile launcher, which has uh, a stronger but less shots or more shots, le uh, less strength. So now, now here's the thing where it, you remember that that heavy support. 
if I get rid of one of those, which I'm thinking of getting rid of the Cyclone missile launchers, I can probably fit a Fire Raptor in there. And then my whole thing is, okay, well, Fire Raptor, of course, is going to start in reserve, but once it comes on, it is a very big target. You either take it out or it's going to take out all of your infantry. Like It is a, a beast at mowing down through infantry. So that now becomes a target. Like, what do you want to do? You're either, your either, your troops, you know, your infantry, whatever they are, is going to take a massive cut because of the Fire Raptor. Or the, the uh, your tanks and more heavy things are going to take a beating if you don't focus on any of my jet bikes. So, wh what's, what's it going to be? You know what I mean? And, and that's kind of the cool thing, but... Even so, like, that's just a gameplay thing. What's the fucking... The theme? Just fucking a bunch of flying shit. Like, a bunch of fast shit. Honestly, I wanted to take out the Outriders and put in more fucking jet flanks. Because <laughs> I just think it's fucking cool to have, like, this fucking flying army that's just fucking, like, w you know, banking around fucking buildings and, like, taking pot shots or whatever they can. It's fucking awesome. Um, but there's also another variant of a jet bike that I can take. Now, it's a heavy support, but I can take up to, I think, nine. Um, they're basically jet bikes, but all of them can take a special heavy weapon. So, imagine, like, a nine-man brick of, I don't know, plasma? Just plasma cannons? Now, am I going to hit you? Maybe, because it's still a template that I have to use. But you might get real fucked up. If any of those things, but the same thing with me, like if they get hot, if I roll a one, uh, they just fucking explode. So, I mean, fuck it. It's fucking awesome. That's why I kind of am leaning towards like taking the fucking fire after out and a lot more jet bikes in there and just seeing what the fuck happens. But like, that's the whole thing. Like that, that whole thing. Oh, I also have a Praetor, which is, what's the equivalent? I guess like a captain in i think a praetor would be like a chapter master yeah okay yeah it'd be like a chapter master so like he's like you know fucking he ha he can basically take a weapon called a paragon blade which has a uh, murderous strike which is if you wound with a six if they don't save it it's automatically dead it just dies it doesn't matter what it is it just dies uh i believe I took out John, mm, one of no, John's. Uh, we gotta bring this up, right? Yeah, because it's like the one thing that my fucking Lunalos did. Uh, I had a, uh, I had a Praetor with, you know, his Paragon Blade, and John's like, oh, I have a fucking great and clean one. There's nothing you can do. And I was like, all right, I'll fucking charge into battle. Charge, fucking, uh, I think I have a lower initiative than the Great Unclean one. No, you, the Praetor has like initiative six. No. I think he went first. That doesn't... That doesn't or initiative sense. five, maybe. I don't know. I thought fucking the Great Unclean one had like an initiative six. I'm not sure. I think I think what happened is I when I attacked you, your fucking bodyguards took all the shots. No, no. I did, because you, no, no, because you it, it, it was a challenge. I challenged you specifically. Okay. Because I was like, fuck this. Like, I was pretty much gonna lose if i didn't take out this guy so i was like you know what it's just the and again this is like the 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 story like this is what happens with the narrative of heresy like a great unclean one this gigantic fucking demon that we know nothing about like we're just seeing like this gigantic like monster and we're like what the fuck is it i'm like well i'm gonna fucking try to kill it whatever it is and my praetor fucking charges into battle with this fucking paragon blade and fucking slices clean through and just like just like in an anime fucking he slide he slides in and then he sheaths it and the fucking demon just dissipates you know what i mean like that's that's awesome that's exactly what heresy is about it's, it's about those moments so like i killed this fucking great unclean one with him like he was shrugging off all kinds of like i was firing Every, I, I was shooting him with everything I had to try to take him down. 
and the one thing that took him down was one lone guy and John of course felt like four of the saves that he had to do because I think I hit him a good amount of times and John felt every single one of them so like there was just no way he was just like oh am I he wasn't in range of uh in in heresy with the demons if you're in range of your deployment because you deploy out of these little like five inch bubbles yeah they're warp rifts but like they're five inch bubbles that pop out on the table if you're within five you can re-roll um a save uh and he has an invulnerable save he has uh oh you have fuck it was nurgle so you even failed your fucking feel no pains like everything about it was just like he just failed everything like multiple rolls he failed and it was hilarious I ended up losing that game on points, but the fact that I took the grade on clean one, it was like the thorn in his Moral side. Victory. Yeah, it was the thorn. He wasn't happy about winning the game because I killed his grade on clean one. So it was it was fantastic. And that's what Heresy is about. It's, it's those types of moments that you can make that I don't know if they're in current 40k. I, I can't speak to it because I haven't played it all that much, but it doesn't feel that way when I play it. So that's why I play Heresy, and you know I have these ideas of how my Raven Wing are gonna, you know, perform on the table. Like, oh, I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and it could all go to shit super easy. You know what I mean? I could be taken out turn one because I didn't hide my uh, jet bikes as well as I thought of. You know what I mean? And then all my reserves are just stuck there, and I can't do anything, so I lose the game. But that's kind of the fun of Heresy. You can just re-rack and like see what happens next time. So is there anything else you want to add, John? No, I think... Uh, I think if we haven't convinced them to at least try by now, you know, just try it out. We'll play with you. Oh, I'm not giving up. Like, we're going to keep talking about heresy. It's just what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, it's, if you think, like, oh, fucking, they're going to get out of the system after these two episodes. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to keep talking about heresy a lot. Um, as soon as I can get some more games in of fantasy, I'll be fucking talking about that. You know what I mean? Uh, one thing is, I think I'm getting out of AOS. Uh, AOS. Oh, AO- AOS like 40k I'm just not feeling there's it's just not there for me um, the, the, maybe that can change in the future maybe there is like an AOS army that comes out where I'm like that's fucking cool and maybe the game changes to a, a little bit towards what I like and I'll fucking get you know right back into it but as of right now I'm not feeling AOS and I'm pre- I'm about 98% sure that I'm going to sell my army. So, we'll see what happens. Anything else? Yeah. And before we close out this episode. No, um, you know, just uh, me and Eric have been playing Crisis Protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, it's It's been a very fun game. I mean, you're playing with characters who you grew up loving, you know, mm-hmm. fucking Marvel characters. I've been watching a lot of fucking... Uh, reruns of uh daredevil and uh punisher so mm-hmm. like i got fisk and i was like oh man this is gonna be great and it was <laughs> it's been so much fun like i've i have not had a bad time even like our first game mm-hmm. fucking uh eric's taskmaster just fucking slaughtered me like this dude could do no wrong and um he killed he killed modok mm-hmm. like in a turn no oh. and <laughs> and i was just like fuck like that was like my biggest piece in the army you know mm. like it all fell apart pretty quickly after that but yeah uh, the, I, se- the second game i came back and beat the shit out of him <laughs> well i am interested in my uh, in protocol as well but um there's a few pieces that i need i am very adamant that i want to play um the illuminati which is basically like uh of course a secret uh group within the new avengers um, where it's like Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Black Panther, uh, Black Bolt, uh, like all, all these different, uh, like very intelligent and cosmic uh, beings. And I want to make that team. The only problem is not a lot of 
things have come out for it yet. Like, I'm really waiting for a Mr. Fantastic, because I actually am a Fantastic Four fan. I know everybody's like, they really fucking suck, whatever. I actually really liked it. Jonathan Hickman's run. Uh, if you like Fantastic Four, Jonathan Hickman, Fantastic Four. You'll like it. Uh, Dan Slott. You, you probably don't know this yet, because you haven't probably looked too much into protocol mm -hmm. but there's there's encounters um like i don't know if you're familiar with the D, &D encounter mm, uh, sorta. yeah they're like they've been coming out with these box sets mm -hmm. uh like one of the ones i think looks really really fucking cool it's a giant and in the box is the is the oh the yeah mm -hmm. this encou mm -hmm. encounter right mm -hmm. so there's um there's an encounter for hulk and basically like you're using this separate set of rules mm -hmm. that's not on the hulk card mm -hmm. and it's you, you like you're just taking a bunch of people against the hulk and he's basically like the green scar mm. you know as angry as he's ever been mm -hmm. so like i could get the hulk piece and we can do a hulk encounter where it's yeah. my green scar versus your illuminati and it's mm -hmm. fucking world war hulk you know yeah i mean that's what they did they they fucking the illuminati was like look fucking hulk's getting way too fucking crazy uh we have to get rid of him for a little bit so they fucking like trick him into getting into a fucking rocket and they shoot him off into a fucking a planet where like in that planet he like whatever like fucking emanations from that planet uh turn hulk into kind of like uh, turn him into kind of bruce banner uh level of smart within the hulk's body which isn't new with the hulk but it, they just yeah. kind of revisited that but he also became like you know like a barbarian king over like these like other monsters and misfits from this planet and then he has like a wife and then fucking everything goes to shit so it's it's awesome it, it, that's another if you don't know this about me i'm a big comic books reader so uh i i know a few things about marvel i'm more of a dc head but i'm not probably gonna play a dc game because i don't think anybody wants to play it um and i don't think anybody wants to deal with metal models so uh, I will give Crisis Protocol a chance. Uh, I am going to start getting some pieces. Only thing that sucks is I think you can only get the rule book in the starter set. Which... Uh, if you go to the website, it's a free PDF download. Oh, okay, cool. I'll at least read the 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 rules there. But I will need a Captain uh, a Captain America and an Iron Man at least. Oh, Doctor Strange is in the fucking Illuminati too, which everybody says he's like a super like broken ass piece. And I kind of don't want to use him because of that. I don't want He's to. not... It's not that he's broken. It's him and Wong together that's broken. Oh, okay. Like, I, I'll, play, just, I'll fuck off Wong then. Like, Wong won't be there. Yeah. Wong's not the Illuminati. Strange. Like, like, Strange... Honestly, like... Like, Magneto. Eric plays Magneto. Magneto's fucking... Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> that's fucking... He's OP. Oh. I, I don't know that he's... He's strong. He's he just... is very strong. I don't know that he's necessarily would be necessarily considered OP mm -hmm. because his uh, his points level represents his strength. Oh, okay. Like he's uh, his he he costs six points, which there's only two other people besides him who cost six points: mm -hmm. Hulk and Thanos. So like his points cost is worth what he does, mm -hmm. but he does what he does fucking really good. Fair enough. Fair enough. So it's not like he's like oh he's a frail old man who has disability to control metal mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll make him cost four points or something like mm -hmm. he, he is in a in a league with thanos and and hulk as far as point cost goes i mean he is like isn't he like an an omega level mutant like, yeah he is fucking like one of the strongest mutants like just ever i mean he gives fucking gene gray a fucking brain aneurysm by her just like touching his shoulder so he just fucking kills her it's fucking awesome yeah I don't know if any of it, anybody else has ever read Ultimatum, but he basically like takes the the. Oh, that's not Ultimatum, the, but the Ultimatum is another one, yeah. What? Where he? No, no, not what you were saying. Yeah. yeah. Ulti on Ultimatum, he he reverses the Earth's polarity, mm -hmm. so he like fucking turns the planet and fucks everything up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like he's done he's done some shit. Yeah, exactly. So like he is a crazy strong piece, and and I like that. I do like that people are saying like the balance is pretty good like everything seems like everything has a fighting chance which is like all you want out of the fucking game like it's all i ever want out of a game i want to take the pieces that i want to take and like as long as there's a chance i know that i have to like strategically be better but if i have a fighting chance i'm more inclined to like like really like the game 
but I mean, I'm just, I'm in so many, I'm in just so many fucking games right now that I want to play. Like, I of course, Heresy uh, Fantasy Battles uh, are two of them, but I want to start playing AT. I want to get into Necromunda. I want to fucking play uh, Marvel. I, I desperately, desperately want to play fucking Kings of War Armada. I just want to play a shit battle game because they look fucking... I just finished... Oh, that was another hobby progress. I finished putting uh, putting together the models for both fleets, the the humans and the orcs, basically. So I kind of want to try that out, but I got to do some more fucking patches because I don't know what happened with the uh, human ships, but they have a whole bunch of like bubbles and a resin, so I had to fill them in. So I'm like, fuck, that's going to take a little bit. But... I'm honestly thinking of doing what I did with my Tomb King, uh, Tomb Kings, um, Empires of Dust, uh, Warband for Kings of War, uh, Vanguard, where I just did a super simple paint job, and I urge everybody to do this. Uh, you can do it with two rattle cans. I'll show you right now. I just have whatever black, right? So, easy to show you on a painted model, and I urge anybody should actually do this because it'll take a little bit of time and it makes your paint job I think very easy uh, so get a black rattle can spray it all black like you usually do then get a light color um, like a white or a gray like um, what are the gray sear or uh, wraith bone are good because if you want like a warmer white or if you want a colder white either way you want to get your spray and you want to spray it like directly from top so like either like this or like this however you want to do it but just directly on top and what it does is it'll lighten the very top of the model uh, and the little speckles of white will integrate with some of the black and it'll create a gray and then at the very bottom of the model it'll be black so it gives you a zenithal kind of uh, prime pattern and all you got to do is just use like a thin down um paint um but honestly or contrast paints just use a contrast paint and paint with it don't like do the the one coat fucking like glob it on like a wash like actually paint with it you know like wick away a little bit of extra and like actually paint with it you're gonna get a really 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 good result that'll get you to tabletop and it'll look good on a tabletop so i'm thinking about doing that with the ships for the game because I just want to play the game and I want to play it kind of fully painted and the cool thing about uh, the contrast paints is uh, they have plenty of good browns like the wildwood and other browns that are perfect for actual wood for the ships so it, it, it'll be an easy paint job whenever I do that so I urge anybody to try that out as a hobby tip oh another hobby tip and this goes for you, John, because I know you're working with a lot of resin. Instead of washing all your resin pieces, if you can, if you can find it, because I know a lot, not a lot of people can, uh, isopropyl alcohol, you know, you're rubbing alcohol, just, you don't even have to bathe them in it. Just get a little bit, like in a throwaway cup, like, you know, a, a, a disposable cup, get a shitty toothbrush that you use with it, dunk it in there, and just brush the model. It's going to get all the, the uh, agent off and alcohol dries very, very quickly. So you don't have to waste time, you know, washing it, waiting a whole day for it to dry and all that shit. Just use isopropyl alcohol. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Hobby tips, baby. I got them. Hobby tips. Oh, and if you want to drill out the barrels for your guns... If you have, you of course, if you have a pin device, um, but to do your pilot holes, a thumbtack, that's all you got to do. Thumbtack, make, you know, poke it right into the, the barrel of the gun where you want it, then get your pin device, drill it out, boom, perfect every time. So you don't have like off center, like shitty barrels. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's definitely something I'll be, I'll, I'll start doing. That's all you got to do. Just fucking get a thumbtack, boom. So, uh, is that something I should do now at the at the end of the fucking podcast? <laughs> I should actually give you a hobby tip that I've I've picked up every once in a while. I gave you three, so. 
but I think that will wrap up this game. Hopefully, hopefully next time we do meet, I'll at least have played one game. I, like I said, I've been really itching to play at least any game, um, any backyard game that I can. So I don't have anything else to say. What about you, John? No, just um, like when we when we revamped Perils of the Warp and and turned it into the Lost Chapters. You know, we we called it the Lost Chapters because it encompasses um, the games that we were wanting to start. Mm -hmm. So like a lost chapter for fantasy is, you know, spell books, scrolls, lost chapter for 30K, 40K is, you know, there's obviously lost chapters. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, Kings of War, uh, same thing as fantasy, books, scrolls that are lost, and, uh, forbidden spells and mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, one of the things that we wanted to focus on is games played mm -hmm. so that um, we can talk about uh, units and models that maybe you're thinking uh, like, oh, I want to buy this, but I don't know how it's going to be on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to be able to tell you um, how it plays. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to get back into that. And uh, so on our next episode, our buddy Eric is going to be joining us for a little bit to talk about Crisis Protocol because this this is this is a guy who has never played any kind of uh, tabletop miniature game mm -hmm. um and he took to it so well like he is taking the painting so very seriously mm -hmm. um he's been getting lessons from uh a friend of ours um mikey and then he's mm -hmm. he got some lessons from roman the other day and um like he he's really going in on this and he's not like he, he's a big guy with fat sausage fingers um so he was like always he was very intimidated like oh, i'm not gonna be able to do this mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna look like shit. but like he's doing very well mm -hmm. on his paint jobs for only having been painting a couple of weeks yep um so like if eric can do it anybody can fucking do it exactly um so we'll have him on as a as a guest to talk about games played mm -hmm. and like roman said hopefully we'll have played something so we can test out the the list that we've been talking about mm -hmm. and actually get to tell you like what happened what did good what didn't do good mm -hmm. How everything goes and um of course i one of the things i've always wanted and discord seems to be making it very easy is to have more people come on and talk about what they're doing like if if you're not playing any of these games that we talk about that we love like if you if you really like 40k um and you want to talk about what's going on and what your army is doing and what units are performing well what units aren't worth it like we would love to have you on the show mm -hmm. you know the you know, we're not just here to talk about dead games. Those those are what we love. <laughs> yeah. But we want to, we want to hear what you love. We we want everybody to get a chance to hear your opinion and your experience. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, listen to this and you want to come on the show, just shoot us a message. Let us know. We would love to have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, shoot us a message here on YouTube down below, or if you want to send us an email, I think it's the Lost Chapter Zero Zero at gmail.com. But later, guys.